Oh, annoying questions indeed. Are we going? I, it, we're trying to go, Rob. We're, we're trying live. to go live at five. Ooh, oh, that's so cheesy, right? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Rob G. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome to my favorite time of day. It has become my favorite time of day. Five <laughs> o'clock. Crack open a bottle of wine. Bust out the cheese. Life is good. Heck yeah. Happy right. Wino Wednesday. Happy Wino Wednesday, everybody. It's Wino Wednesday number 18, if you can believe it. 18 varietals we have learned about thus far in mm. the Wino Wednesday series. So thanks for joining us. Uh, my name is Gina. And I'm Robbie G, or Professor of Cheese, if you will. If you will. Whatever you want to call me, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Will or won't. <laughs> Will or won't. Uh, but today we are happy to have you here again, once again, um, to join us for our Barbera tasting. Barbera. Barbera. I just learned. I learned something already. I thought it was Barbara. Barbara. Yes. As in, as in Streisand. And he calls himself a professor. <laughs> I knew it was Barbera. Come on. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. Um, well, listen. I hope. Uh, everyone that has a YouTube channel uh, knows that you can chat with us via the chat function in YouTube. And if you don't have the channel, well, no worries. You can still listen along and hopefully we'll answer the questions as we go. Yeah. So write your questions and, and we'll get to them and, and we, we will be explaining what is in front of you. And of course about this wine and, and um, about Barbera in general as well. Um, so we'll be keeping an eye on the, on the questions as we go. Um, and so we're, we're going to get to the wine, but please, if you haven't opened it, pop it now, pour yourself a glass. Um, but I want to tell you about what the cheeses are. Yes. <laughs> My second favorite sound. <laughs> uh, and I want to tell you about what the cheeses are. Yes, in, in case order. you jump ahead, right? Exactly. And then some, some of the other goodies that are on the plate. Um, so the first Can cheese... Can I be your fan? Please, yes. The first cheese is the Robiola Bocina. And that one's pretty easy to spot because it is the one that looks like a brie. <laughs> Robiolas are kind of like the Italian version of a brie. Um, so it's the soft cheese with, the, with that bloomy white rind on it. The second cheese is called Mountaineer. And Gina's holding it up. It's a little bit of a kind of straw color with an orangey uh, rind. It is a uh, washed rind cheese. And it's kind of a medium texture. Mm -hmm. Semi squidgy, not... Not hard, not soft. Yeah, you know it's funny when they say semi-firm or semi-soft, what's the difference? I'm it not is. sure, I never know which one to say it is, but so it is one of those. It's like a half cup, half full, half empty. Yeah, for kind of sure. Thing. Anyway, uh, so you have Mountaineer there, which we'll tell you about. The four alarm cheddar, we're gonna do third, and it's in the little triangle, and it's pretty easy to spot. It's got four different types of peppers in the cheese, so that's what that is. Mm -hmm. The fourth one is going to be the one that's the most aged. It's chunked up like, um, like little rocks and uh, it's called OG Crystal and uh, that's a really fun one which we'll get to. I like to say OG Crystal. OG Crystal. Just cause. <laughs> Isn't that like the champagne? Yes, yeah, something like <laughs> The uh, Okay, and we have other little goodies. For example, this it looks like a speck. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the, this meat is it looks like a prosciutto. It's, it's called speck. It's like a smokier, more gamey speck. I would, that's how I would describe it. It's from Northern Italy. We're going to talk a lot about Northern Italy today. Mm -hmm. um, I see dried fruits, mm -hmm. uh, like ap apricots. <laughs> <laughs> Which everyone knows. We hope. Otherwise, you've had too much wine so already. There's a flower. <laughs> there is a, uh, let's see, grapes. This is a sh uh, sh sour cherry, not shower. <laughs> a showered cherry preserve. <laughs> sour cherry preserve in the little bucket there. Play around with that. It's not really meant to go with anything in particular, but just play around. It's really fun. With and anything. if I may interject, hold just a little of that until the end when we get to the Ooh. chocolate portion of the program, including... So, Jeannie, you tell them about these because this is all you. This is all me. Okay, so I know it's going to be temp hard to hold these to the end, but hold these to the end. <laughs> Um, there is reasons we're doing chocolate with Barbera today, which you will learn. And we're doing chocolate truffles with the truffle hunter, Barbera Dasty, because we thought that was just clever. Um, so these are chocolate truffles, but not only chocolate truffles, they're blue cheese chocolate truffles. Mm -hmm. So there's some blue cheese mixed into the chocolate truffles, which I know sounds super weird, but the reason you want to hold your some of the cherry till the end is because the cherry with the blue cheese chocolate truffle, total dessert. That sounds so exciting. Yes, it's very exciting. I'm and, done babbling now. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll talk too, because there's a lot of 
uh, history and there's a lot of connection with truffles, we're talking about tuber truffles in the region that we're also going to talk about in northern Italy. You have uh, crackers on the <coughs> plates and then grapes, but uh, let's oh, get into... And also our favorite. Oh, rosemary. We, we can never forget the rosemary. No. Feel free to nibble that with every single cheese on here. We've learned that that's one of our favorite things. Yeah, and it's kind of a signature now. Yeah, the, sure. um, So what's up with the wine? Tell, tell the us wine. about okay. Bar Barbera. Barbera, the truffle hunter. Okay, is this the cutest? Okay, let's. it's the cutest label. Let's start there. It's called Lida, and do you know why? Uh, n no. Because this dog is the winemaker's dog named Lida, who is their premier truffle hunting dog. That is so cute. So not only does this winemaker in Piedmont um, in the Asti pro province, um, make wine. Uh, their dog Lita hunts for truffles. So, in honor of Lita being such a great finder of the truffle, they named this wine after the dog Lita. Well, so. in, on the label, is that a sun or is that a truffle? That's a truffle. <laughs> <laughs> Those are not sunbeams. These are the aromas. Okay, of the I wasn't really sure, but I think they made it like a diamond color because truffles are sometimes called the diamond of the earth. Yes, that's Do you true. Think? They kind of made it look like a diamond. Yeah, so that's that's the smell coming out yeah. and, and calling the dog, saying, <laughs> "That's right, I am here. Come, come I'm to here. me." I'm here. You did. I did tell you that I think I could be a truffle dog in another life. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll be my next life a truffle dog because I love truffles. I can sniff one out a mile away. Yeah. If someone opens one, I'm like, truffle. Well, let's. Well, after the wine. After I sip the wine, I'm going to truffles. Know. Yes, but this is Barbera, 100% Barbera too from Piedmont, mm -hmm. which you've been to on your Northern Italian yeah. tour a number of times, yeah? We've been there twice for the work trips, and then I've been there once just on a, fa on a family trip. Yeah. Okay. Um, but how, what, what do you think? The wine. Super, they call it the people's wine, Barbera. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, which I understand is the third most popular varietal in Italy. Yeah, do you, you, know, you, the first, do you know the first Wait. two? Sangiovese. For, for reds. For reds. Yes. Uh, Sangiovese, it's gotta be. Sangiovese, no what's the other one? I think it is Multiplichon. Yeah, you're right. Ah, because I looked Did it. you cheat? I did. <laughs> I, wanted to I was going to pose that to the audience, but oh well. <laughs> yes, but um, Barbera then after that, right? Of the most abundant kind of... Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah, so I think this is like a people's wine. It's what I envision always, and every time we go to Italy, it's what you have. They just put the wine on the table, you start drinking. Mm -hmm. That's what this is. Um, meant to go with foods, mm -hmm. which is why I think it's going to be really great with all these cheeses. Yeah, and, it, and it's, it's so funny that you start with that because it's exactly how I would describe it. Another word for the people's wine is to say yeah. it's a table wine. Yeah. And it's, so it, it comes from, it originates from, from Piedmont, from the hills mm -hmm. in Piedmont, um, around the towns of Asti, Alexandria, um, Alba, that area, which is of course also known for the for the white truffle, and um, it is it's the wine that they drink for dinner. They they drink with everything. Mm -hmm. It's high acidity, a little bit lower alcohol usually. Um, it's what I, I I compare it to Sangiovese. Mm -hmm. um, we and, and it's funny because Sangiovese is the most grown grape in Italy. This is like the the, the Sangiovese of, of northern. Italy. Ah, the region right. um, also produces Nebbiolo, which is what goes into Barolo, and that's a more renowned wine. That's not what people are <clears> drinking <throat> every day. That's what they bust out for special occasions. This is this is what they have every day. It's very versatile, kind of goes mm -hmm. with everything. This is more of the, the people's wine. A bottle of wine a day keeps the doctor away. That's, that's, that's how the say. saying goes, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that's my so get on my it. doctor. Yeah. Now Piedmont, if anyone is not aware, that's kind of central northern, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. On the map, on the boot. Yeah. So day. so yeah. this um, this whole area, the, it's the Piedmont means foot of the mountain. It's right next to Lombardy, which is where Milan is, and it's another really rich cheese region. It's pretty close to Val d'Aosta, which is so these are just all kind of in the foot, the Alps and the foothills of the mm -hmm. Alps coming down into the into the mainland, mm -hmm. and uh, so tons and tons of great uh, culinary history, uh, cheese, wine, but also truffles. Truffles. I'm making because of this whole region of food, Rob. Tonight, not only because we're having this Barbera, mm -hmm. I'm going to make. Pasta bolognese. Ooh, from, I, from Parma area. From Parma area, yeah. but northern, yeah. in that whole region of great, great foods. Um, and I tossed in some Parmigiano rinds into the Very sauce. Nice. Very good. And I'm going to shave some truffle cheese on top. Wow. I'm going to celebrate Ita Italia which, tonight. Which truffle cheese? Uh, I did um, Moliterno. Very nice. Truffle mm -hmm. pecorino. Mm -hmm. 
Indeed. Well, so truffles are basically a mushroom, a type of mushroom yeah. that are mushroom. found underground. Yeah, fungi. They're found underground. And uh, so a lot of us know chocolate truffles. That's what Gina made is chocolate truffles. Chocolate truffles are named truffle because they just look like they resemble yeah. the tuber, real truffles. And, uh, mm -hmm. and then a, a lot, oftentimes you can, or um, people make truffles that are filled with cheese or other things. I mean, truffles that are filled with things. These are filled with cheese. Yes. <laughs> These are filled with cheese. Wait, there's, there's mushroom truffles, there's chocolate truffles, yes. there's cheese truffles, mm -hmm. all in the shape of the truffle. Yeah, they all look like truffles. Yes, exactly. Hence the name. But mm -hmm. uh, those truffle dogs, speaking of truffle dogs, yeah. they are, uh, there's no real particular breed that they use. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've, we've done um, a couple of these trips and we've, and we've gone out with the local tour guides and they tell us all about the truffle hunting yes. and how important it is. But to, you've never done it, have you? I've never done I it. I haven't done an actual hunt at night but we've been to the markets where they sell the truffles in Alba and in around Alba and uh, they say that it's not really a particular breed of dog it's um, it just has to be a dog that is that can be trained mm -hmm. um, that that likes to play the game um, so they you know they they, they they work on with tons of dogs and if the dog is not interested then he's not gonna he or a she's not gonna be a good truffle hunter <laughs> but they're really good truffle hunters they can go for thousands of dollars. I, I've heard of dogs that sell for over ten thousand dollars. It is crazy because they just to find the elusive truffle. truffles. Yeah. yeah, and not eat them. And not and yeah, and not <laughs> eat them. And that's and that's the advantage of dogs <laughs> over pigs. And some people may know that pigs used to be used to, to hunt truffles. Pigs yeah. actually have better noses than dogs. So crazy. But they just cannot be trained. <laughs> not trusted. Not trusted. They. I think they're pretty smart. I think they know exactly what they're doing. <laughs> that would be my reward would be finding yeah. and eating that truffle. For and sure. The pigs also sure. mess up. They mess up the areas where the truffles grow and the dogs are more like, they're the just gentle. more gentle with it. They're more ginger. Oh, so cute. Okay. <laughs> Should we start with the Robiola bocina? Yeah, let's like get this? into the Robiola. So, um, that was the brie-like one on the plate, everybody. Are we using the cracker? Yes, as our a, knife? and I made one for you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. That's not enough, though. <laughs> I, know, I know. I figured you'd just eat the whole thing straight up. I'm sorry, I forgot my knife. Um, but Robiola Bocina. This is kind of uh, Italy's, Robiola's mm -hmm. version of brie. You could kind of say, right? No. Yeah. Whenever you see the word Robiola, I always just think Italian brie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm sure the French wouldn't approve of that. They would, yeah, they would get territorial as mm -hmm. they, as they mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. It's, you think of it like a like a compliment or an ode to the traditional French brie is it really the the similarity is just in the fact that it's it's made it's soft ripened so that could even be kind of a like a general category of cheese soft ripened that means that it starts off fairly soft and then the more it ripens or ages the softer it gets mm -hmm. so it gets softer as it gets older older that makes sense. It is. It's so crazy how that <laughs> soft works. ripen. Yeah, soft ripen. It's so good, and it's got the bloomy rind. And so the bloomy mm -hmm. rind is the other thing that's similar. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's good with the wine. Mm. Um, but robiolas. So it 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 is. Um, you can say that it's kind of for just to simplify it. Say it's northern Italy's version of brie. It's a, it's like kind of their their brie style. Mm -hmm. um, Robiolas are, are made with any type of milk. Oftentimes they're mixed. This one is mixed. Yeah. This one is sheep and cow, I believe. Mm -hmm. It is. So it's sheep and cow's milk, but sometimes they are goat and sheep. Sometimes they're goat, sheep, and cow. We have a cheese called Latour. Mm. And for a lot of you guys that, that do a lot of classes, you probably, or you go to the shop and frequent it, you <laughs> probably know Latour. We call it the ice cream of cheese. Yes, exactly. And it's goat, sheep, and cow. It's also from Piedmont. It's actually from the same producer which is yes. called Alta Longa. Mm. In Longa, right? It's in Longa, yeah. And it's, um, which is where Truffle Hunter, Hunt, Truffle Hunter comes from. They're kind of like a medium-sized operation, but they specialize in a lot of the really traditional cheeses from the region. Um, Robiola is... Um, there, so there's, there's some debate over where the name comes from. Some people think it comes from the, the town of Robio. <laughs> R O B B I O. <laughs> Did you make that up, Robbie no, 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 no. G? <laughs> has nothing to do with me or my family. My you family, should move to Robio. My family doesn't come from there. <laughs> um, Robio, or the word um, for ruddy or red in Italian, um, kind of is similar. Mm -hmm. And so they think that some of the Robiolas get a wash rind, and it changes the color to like a, a reddish Amber, yeah. amber hue. Mm -hmm. And uh, so some people think that that's the where the where the name comes mm -hmm. from. But who knows? Who knows? Who cares? Robiola is delicious. <laughs> I love the bocina. Um, it's not mushroomy and earthy like some of the French brie yeah. or any of that. But to me, it's just 
I think it's the cream. And you talked about the wine being so acidic. When you put it with the Robiola, it's fabulous. I gotta say, this has been one of my favorite pairings of late, which I wouldn't have expected, Rob. Low tannin, mm -hmm. high acidity. The grapes for these are really dark. I don't mm -hmm. know if you've seen the grapes, but they're more like, um, they're kind of noir. They're kind of like, almost like blackish yeah. purple in color. So they kind of look more like Nebbiolo. They're really, really nice looking. Um, so uh, Barbera is also one of those grapes that was kind of like, for a long time, it was, they didn't, they didn't take a lot of care with Barbera. And oh, that's they right. kind of yeah. got a bad, a kind they of a bad, get a bad rap. rap. Mm -hmm. Just like Sangiovese did. Mm -hmm. They had a, what I would call like the My Fair Lady treatment in, in the 80s, <laughs> okay, 90s or so. Oh, it just, you know, they, there was a transition. They, they were, they started getting planted in better areas. They started getting aged in I oak. I love that technique, the My Fair Lady. <laughs> the My Fair Lady <laughs> tr uh, technique. Because the same thing that, that St. Joe Vese went through. And then, <laughs> which is, um, isn't My Fair Lady based on that Pyg Pygmalion? Yes, that's right. It, it is, um, I think. Yes. And I don't remember the author's name, but somebody mm -hmm. else, I'm sure, will tell me. Yes, I'm sure. Um, mm -hmm. But anyway, so, so it, it became higher quality. And in, in, it, in um, Italy, the wines can be kind of confusing in all countries where they have all those designations. It can be, it can be confusing. Right. But they have D.O., Oh, and gosh. then D O C, and then D O C G, and each like each time they put a letter on, it gets more exclusive, mm. or um, I guess more um, it's it's passed more tests, it becomes higher quality, and they can charge more for you know for the wine, I guess. So but, it should be super califragilisticexpialidocious. <laughs> that'd be the best. <laughs> <laughs> well, they do have a super because. <laughs> They have the, the DOC, which mm -hmm. was like the original Barbera. Okay. And then it went to, in like 2008, it became DOCG. And it had to be, um, it had to come from a certain place and yeah. it has to be over 90% of the wine must be Bar Barbera, mm -hmm. to, to be called Barbera de Asti. And which this is. Yeah, mm -hmm. w which it is. Um, and then it has to be aged a certain amount of time. There's also one called D Barbera de Asti, D O C G Superior. <laughs> That's your super califragilistic. That'd be the one. <laughs> and then it also Excuse has me. to get over like a certain percentage of, of alcohol, which is like 11 and a half or 12 percent, which really which isn't that much. It isn't that much, but this is over that. It's 13. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why you picked it? <laughs> That's how I base everything. It's like picking a horse based on the silks. I, yes. <laughs> or you picked uh, the Super Bowl team based on the colors. Is that what you did? <clears throat> yes, I did. Yeah. Colors. Um, it was uh, red, red versus ver blue. Red versus red. Red no, versus white. No, red versus white. Tampa Bay were white that day. Okay. <laughs> so we liked the wine, huh? I liked it with the cheese. I got to say, the wine is just easy drinker, which we know. Cheese is really mild. Our friend Jason agrees, but together mm -hmm. they were. Yeah. They brought each the best out of each other, I think, together. I Definitely say, eat the it. rind on this one. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's meant to be eaten. I this one is. I think it adds to it. It adds a little texture. Yeah. It does give a little bit of like that. I don't know earthiness mm -hmm. in my opinion. I like the rind on this mm -hmm. one. I agree. I concur. Now, professor, you have to teach me more about this second one, Mountaineer, because Mountaineer. honestly, yeah. It, Do you not know much about no, it? No, no. I probably tasted it once in my whole life. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to taste it again. Yeah, so right Mountaineer, I, I haven't tasted this batch since it Ooh. came in. It's, <laughs> I bet it, it looks like a stinky cheese. Yeah, take a whiff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So this Mountaineer. Is, this is definitely a washed rind cheese. I can tell that it's a washed rind cheese just by looking at it. So just like I, I was just talking about this for the Robiola. The Robiola is not washed. So see how the color is more white that's just a, a bloomy rind um, if they were to wash that robiola it would take on more of this orangey reddish hue mm -hmm. the mountaineer is an alpine style cheese it's from a small domestic producer who are they're they're up they're in the the are they mountains or hills i guess mountains of virginia mm -hmm. and um this is based on the Alpine style cheeses from Europe. So the cheesemaker actually went to Savoie, which is where Beaufort comes from, and Val d'Aosta, which I also mentioned at the mm -hmm. beginning. That's where Fontina comes from. Those are Alpine style cheeses, um, and, they, and they make that style of cheese. This one is aged for about six months. Um, it's got a really kind of crumbly 
gritty texture, kind of like those English cheeses, the cheddars that come from Southwest England. And, uh, and then they wash it every few days during the aging process, which gives it this, um, this aroma and the, the pungency on, on the rind. Yeah. Um, this is made with animal rennet, so it's made in a really traditional, traditional way. Mm -hmm. It's good. Oh, yeah. The t uh, this is when you see the word fudgy, mm -hmm. I think, when you talk oh. about a texture of a cheese, because mm -hmm. it is fudgy to me. It kind of strong. coats and, and lingers on the tongue. Mm -hmm. um, it is strong, but I love it. It it's is true alpine. Yeah. I mean, if you stuck that under me, anyone, you could say that was from France, that from Switzerland. That's got a great, great aroma. That taste to <clears throat> me, that reminds me of a cheese called a Vacheron, and no. which is aged. Vacheron. Pure bourgeois. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was trying to not be a, a, too much of a uh, too insider. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually called a Vacheron Pure Bourgeois. Well said. <laughs> Thank you. Can I spell it? That's another question. No. The um, Vacheron Pure Bourgeois is an Alpine style cheese. It's It has a very similar texture and, and uh, and look to it. The rind has the same, to me, it's like the same growth mm. on the rind. Isn't it crazy? It it's is delicious. Similar. And you have to eat the rind, everybody. Mm -hmm. It seems that you shouldn't. It, it looks like it's kind of bark like but it's gritty. And Jason wants to know, Professor, mm -hmm. what makes that grittiness? Mm -hmm. And we get that grittiness on a lot of washed rinds. Well. Mostly on the washed rinds, I'd say you get the grittiness. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, his, as his mouth is full. No, I, oh, I was mean, your meal today, sir? <laughs> I did. That was my fault. I couldn't resist. I had it in my hand. I know because it's so good. <laughs> the rind is something that forms during the aging process, and it is um, it's basically dried up butter fat and whey, and also all of the microflora that is in the environment where they're aging it. Mm -hmm. um, so it all attaches itself to the rind. There's yeah. also a lot of salt on there. Um, so I don't know how or when they salt this cheese, but they they probably do some of it on the rind. And that's what they wash it in is a, is a salt water. Now I'm sure, which is brine, but I'm sure there's some salt that happens before that, that to get into the interior of the cheese. So it's, it's a mixture of all those things. The longer it ages, the thicker the rind will be as well. So this one is pretty thick. Like, it is pretty thick. It managed thick. to get pretty thick for six months or so. But it's not crusty, like, you know, like chewy crusty or anything. And I just love that it adds that texture, the grittiness. Yeah. Uh-huh. I and like it. It's not too pungent. Because some of those rinds, whoa, they're I so bitter. This isn't bitter. Meadow Creek Dairy, they're, um, so they, they wanted to do something that was it was an ode to the Alpine cheeses or to that style of cheese, but it, they also wanted it to, to represent their their terroir, their their you know the the, the Virginia, the mountains of Virginia, yes. and that fresh air. And, yeah. And so that's this is what they came up with. I mean, I knew that it was an Alpine before I ever saw it because it's, just looking at it, right? Yeah. You can tell. Okay, Meadow Creek. So they also do um, another one of my favorite, Grayson. Mm -hmm. So it's a softer cheese, almost like a giant robiola comes in a square, almost like Taleggio, if you've ever seen a whole thing of Taleggio. Washed, super gritty, mm -hmm. really spongy and almost pretty like. Yeah, we, Grayson is a is a really stinky cheese. It's a it's a washed rind. It mm -hmm. comes in a square. So it's it probably is based on Taleggio now that I think about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I think it's better. Don't tell the Italians. Ooh. But I love Grayson. <laughs> it's a little bit firmer than um, then Taleggio, I believe they, they have, um, I'm just looking at the color on this and I believe that it's probably from Jersey cows. Yeah, I don't, I don't being, even know being that. so golden. Mm -hmm. But I would venture to say, Professor, that you could be right on that Ooh, one. I am right, because it's in my you notes. Are. Okay, great. So the, the Jersey cows are a little bit smaller and they produce a little bit less milk, but it's really, really great flavor. Yeah. And a lot of times it, it, rich, it really that. takes on that, um, the, the, the darker, almost yellowish color. And so that's Jersey cow. Jersey cows living in Virginia. And wow. The other the other um, cheese that Gina mentioned, Grayson, is one that we have more frequently than we have the Mountaineer. It's a little bit softer, but the color is is the same pretty much. Mm -hmm. And it also has that that really uh, that really orange and gritty oh. line. And if you like grit, Jason, go for the Grayson. Mm -hmm. We'll hopefully get give that a try on one of the plates soon. Yeah. It's ultra gritty. Okay, Rob. Now I'm doing Ooh, Mountaineer sour. with the Sour Cherry Preserve oh. and Rosemary Petal. If you insist. So I'm going to try that now. I suggest everyone do as well. I did like the um, cheese with the wine too. It wasn't as smooth together to me as the first one. Did a, but, was the um, cheese too yeah. big for the wine? Nope. No, the wine still stood Stands there, up. It was, which is interesting. It could have gone the other way, but, but no, I think it stood up. Mm. Um, it's just yummy. Mm -hmm. I, I like Mountaineer, and I do like that texture, a little softer than some. It's kind of it, fun. The mm -hmm. sour cherry brings out. What do you think? Like more, 
I get like a real saltiness on the cheese when I have it with the. Oh yeah. Do you get more mm -hmm. like the salt comes out a little bit more? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. The salt and oh, the yeah. bitter, which like. It's it's, it's balanced out though with the. I'm gonna have another bite. I'm gonna have another bite. I'll, let me talk hold, while hold he does it. I'll hold the thumb. But um, <laughs> oh my gosh, the, you're right. That was like um, oh, what am I trying to think? Like cheesecake when you have the cherry and the cheesecake. Oh yeah. That's what that reminded me of together. Mm. Did you get a rosemary petal on there? On the first one. The did, first yeah. one. Yeah, I like that too. Right. Mm. Mm. That's good stuff. It is good stuff. Mm -mm -mm. Delish. Um, do you know about where? <coughs> Hi, Carol. By the way, uh, where hey, in Virginia, Carol. Virginia Meadow Creek is, and I can't remember the city. Um, if they're right down the town. Well, that's right. Carol's <laughs> from that general area, Meadow Creek in Virginia. That's all I wrote. I do not know. Um, I wonder, but I do wonder, Carol. I wonder if Grayson is the name of a of a town, even. Oh, it might have been. Oh, Carol, we're gonna have to look that one up. Exactly where in Virginia? Meadow Creek. Sure, Meadow Creek. But um, no, Piedmont is, of course, the region in Italy. I don't think there's a place in Virginia called that, but we'll have to look Ca that up. Called what? Yeah, Piedmont. Is there a Piedmont? In there Virginia? might be a Piedmont. That would there's, be hilariously I mean, there's appropriate a, with this pairing. There's <laughs> Piedmont in a lot of places because there is a there is a foot of the mountain in any place. There's, there's a Piedmont in, in, the, in Oakland. <laughs> where I, I'm from. I know. Well, there's a Paris in California. So. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of times we pronounce them differently. Like there's a True. Madrid. In, uh, <laughs> in Iowa, <coughs> excuse me. Speaking of Iowa, we're gonna have a cheese from Iowa. But there's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of, <coughs> of course, names, especially on the East Coast. <coughs> coast are European names. And yeah, on, right, and on right. The For West sure. Coast, we have so many Spanish names. And everyone who wants to know about Grayson, um, it's just like it sounds, G-R-A-Y-S-O-N. Yeah. Grayson is the other cheese that Meadow Creek does, and on top of this Mountaineer, also delicious. Highly recommend it. And that's such a cool thing. There are so many great American cheesemakers that are that are really like delving into making some of the really the more challenging cheeses there are to make, and those are the, the wash drying cheeses, because they take so much care, uh, right? balance and care, mm -hmm. especially during the aging process. I mean, there's a lot of... Um, you, I mean, you can really screw those cheeses up. Yeah, blues too. But um, right. Um, and so when we when we visit cheesemakers, they they talk about that. Like those are the the they're, they're the challenging ones, but they're the ones that they really are um, are passionate about. Um, more so than I don't know some of the the ones that are easier to make. Like some of the fresh cheeses are just. I mean, of course they're just passionate about their yeah. cheeses, but but it is different. Yeah, the care <clears throat> it takes for some of these. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure, mountaineer. Yeah, takes some care. Um, try the Mountaineer with the Speck, everybody. And remember, mm. the Speck was this uh, prosciutto-looking meat, um, slightly smoked. And if I can tell you a story as I throw it on the table. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Gert's little hometown, which Rob has been to, too. From a teeny town in Austria. Gert is Gina's mom. Is my mom. Uh-huh. Uh, the man next to her, the Bauern, he was the farm man, had a little Speck-making area of his kitchen that he would just be roast, you know, smoking speck all day long uh, for years and years and years. Rob, the walls were black <laughs> and probably had this much soot, like uh, literally inches of soot <laughs> built in. I think the kitchen kept shrinking because of all the smoke and everything. You mean that they the, would make this beautiful Bauern speck, farmer speck. The health mm -hmm. department didn't come and shut them down? <laughs> no, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> and it was the best speck ever. And when we do Alp tours again, we're going to try that Bauern speck. Yeah. He's not there anymore, I take it. He's not there, no. unfortunately. Yeah. I think I keep telling Roger, my husband, that we're going to take over Rob. We're going to go to Overdrawbury in the summers, have dinners at the castle, make speck in the little kitchen. Um, yeah, invite people to yeah. enjoy it. Uh, there was a, I remember we hiked up uh, the mountain in, in the town and we saw the cheese making facility too. Right? Yes. The man, I don't think he ever washed those um, later hosen. <laughs> <laughs> the ones that were hanging that I no, saw. No, the ones he was wearing. Oh. He was like super stiff. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that's good, that's good. <clears throat> okay, so um, Carol thinks that um, Meadow Creek might be in Madison County, south of D.C. And that might be about right, right at that kind of skinny tip of Virginia. Sounds right. We're going to have to, we're going to trust you. I hadn't looked. Um, and Sam is on. Delene is excited. Hi. Say hi. <laughs> Hi, family. Rob's family's <laughs> watching, so behave. <laughs> <laughs> Best behavior. Best behave. All right, so we're in Virginia. Now, must we move to, isn't it Iowa? 
Yes. And you have connections to Iowa, Rob. Yeah, I've got family in Iowa, mm-hmm. my favorite uncle. <laughs> my your only uncle. <laughs> yeah, I but he is my favorite. <laughs> you know, and you know my Uncle Apple. I do, I do. This is from, oh. um, it's from a cheesemaker that we have. Um, we, we featured their cheeses before. Um, called uh, Milton Creamery, and they're mm-hmm. in southern Iowa. They're a Mennonite community, so they're you know similar to the Amish, where mm-hmm. um, as I like to say, they're very DIY. They yes. are. Mm-hmm. Um, they take a lot of pride in ingenuity, hard work, and so they they like to to do things that themselves. They like churn their own butter, make their own cheese, they grow their mm-hmm. own gardens, probably make their own beer and wine too. Um, so this mm-hmm. is a creamy Ooh. cheddar, creamy cheddar base. And uh, but it's got four chilies. It's called four alarm cheddar. It's cow's milk. The chilies are chipotle. Okay, keep going. <laughs> it says chili. Yeah. Okay. Um, a jalapeno and ghost. Is ghost, ghost the really hot one? Ghost is the hot one. Is this for me? I thought it might be. Yeah, it might be habanero. But you're saying it's ghost, and I think ghost outpaces habanero on the whatever the number scale is in chili Ooh. peppers. But Ooh. it's good. Okay, we picked this, you guys, because Barbera is typically supposed to go well with spicy foods. Ooh, it comes on the finish. Whoa. Whoa, boy. <laughs> right? <Woo-hoo. laughs> oh. So we'll have to see what everybody thinks of Four Alarm and the Barbera, but <clears throat> especially like the Barbera de Asti's, Asti Spumantes, which we'll get to if why they're different than Barbera de Asti. Um, but anything with this little sweetness and acidic should go good with the spice. Mm. So we're going to see, because that, that's Four Alarm. I think it's a good I'm flavor. afraid it's going to over... Well, you'll, you'll tell me. Mm-hmm. I will tell you, it does not. You know what it does? Mm. It makes the wine smooth, like velvet. Wow. Suddenly, the acid in the wine is gone. Wow. Probably because you've killed the taste buds. You can't even taste that there's acid does in the wine. Does it bring out any sweetness in the wine? Yeah, definitely. So I like it. Actually, might be my new favorite pairing for well, Alarm cool. with the Barbera. So the spiciness made it a lot sweeter mm. and softer, less acidic. Well, good. Good news for Alarm. But, um... Do you, Milton Creamery, they, so Mennonite. Yeah, so they're um, they they make pretty much all um, or mostly cheddars, at least the, the stuff that we've seen. The one that we featured before is called Prairie Breeze, and it's oh, just right. a, it's a really sharp, uh, about a two year, but I think they I think it ages different amounts. Pr- the Prairie Breeze is just their it's just their straight up uh, cheddar, no nothing added to it. It's uh, cow's milk. They're all cow's milk. They um, so they they buy all of their they, the creamery buys their milk from local farmers, and all okay. the farmers are either family or friends. And um, they're all the milk that they pull comes from <coughs> within thirty miles, so oh, it's as local as local can be. That's such an old world tradition of cheese yeah. making that you'd find in Europe. And, well, right? I, I, yeah. I don't know if they have to send out a horse and buggy, so it's just like a timing thing. Maybe or, I don't know. I don't know seriously, <laughs> like. But Could they're be. within 30 miles, mm-hmm. and then each herd that they pull from of cows is is less than 130, I believe. And so, um, so a lot of the stuff they pull, mm-hmm. they're they're kind of like um, there's two different types of, of cheese of cheese making. You can you can have mm-hmm. um, co-op, so where they they can blend the different milks, right? Mm-hmm. Or they can do more farm. It's called farm, farmhouse or farmstead style. And a lot of cheddars they do this, like the traditional cheddars. But that would be if they just took one farmer's animals that were all grazing in the same place, same time. Makes it farmstead. And yeah. Mm-hmm. And so it's a it's a unique cheese. Um, I don't know if they if they do this as a in co-op style or farmstead style, yeah. but it's so small and so isolated to within 30 miles. I think it's, I can pretty much say it's all farmstead. <clears throat> yeah, it would make sense. Yeah. yeah. It's really good. I bet you this would melt so good in a quesadilla. Ooh, right? yeah. Now I'm going to try it, everybody, with the sour cherry preserve. I think that's going to be good, but I'm loving it with the wine. It's got the right, mm-hmm. I mean, it's the perfect texture for melting. I mean, throw it on a burger. Mm. Oh, yeah. Burger, what about, oh, is it, would it be sacrilege to put it on a steak? No, just to get the heat. I mean, maybe not like a um, not a fillet. I was gonna say not a fillet, <laughs> like a, not a uh, what's the one with the bone in you know, a ribeye. Type, ribeye, yeah. A ribeye. <laughs> ribeye is the one that the, all the chefs. Yeah. Say. But wow, to melt that or melt that in a mac and cheese, everybody oh. would be so good. But I absolutely love it with this wine, and it's interesting because. Barbera, I don't ever think of Italian food as ever super spicy. Mm-hmm. Other than soppressata salami, uh-huh. salumi, I do you think well, of Italian food is super spicy? No. The, so mm-hmm. the spicy Italian food is, is connected with the South. So Calabria mm-hmm. and... Um, Calabrian peppers. Ca- exactly. Mm-hmm. So 
um, Calabria and the other, um, what's the one, um, it begins with a B, uh, Basilicata, oh, yeah, right. um, Campania, <clears throat> all those regions, they, they grow peppers down there. So it's it's interesting how the cuisine is is very region specific, especially in Italy. But this the all the the spicy stuff, soppressata, which is basically just a sausage. It's like mm -hmm. a pepperoni like sausage yeah. that is spicy. It comes from the south. From the south, all the south. Mm -hmm. So southerners are spicier than northern counterparts. <laughs> well, you know the argument <laughs> can, can be made. Can be made. And then oh, mm -hmm. go ahead. Sorry. <clears throat> oh no. <clears throat> I've just got the spice in my throat. <laughs> so our friend Carol lo loves the cheddar, and I do too. So a couple things. Interesting that that's a cheddar because there's so many ways that cheddar can be made. Yeah. This is a brick, comes in like a block mm -hmm. style cheddar, and it's very soft for a cheddar. It's a creamy, young, yeah. the, the base is really young. Mm -hmm. and, and cheddars are a, just a super versatile cheese. I mean, you can go so many directions with them. So that's why oftentimes, I, I would say more with cheddar than any other cheese, you see bits added to it, whether it's mustard, whether it's spice. Yes. Um, you see, um, what's another thing for cheddars? We've had cheddars with like horseradish, like oh my gosh, all kinds of Every kind of flavor can be in there. And do you know, Rob, Carol uh, asked the question, how they add the spices? Is it during, just what, which process of the cheese making you think they add? Yeah, so, okay, mm -hmm. my, the, the reason why I'm gonna say this is because I'm gonna pick up this mm -hmm. cheese. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is kind of marbled. Do you, do you notice how it's kind of marbled? Yes. Okay, so those... That's the, a good way. Look at it really close. He's yeah. right. Yeah. And so what that tells me is that those mar the marbling is in the shape of cheese curds. And we've talked about cheddar curds, especially on this before. Anytime you're in a place like a Wisconsin and, and they talk about squeaky cheddar curd, cheddar, they talk about eating <laughs> curds, they're, they're speaking about cheddar. <clears throat> so they kind of look like little bits of popcorn. And so it looks like the curd has already been made at this point, and then they throw everything in a vat, and then they press it together. And so the, the mar this marbling occurs um, with the with the, the peppers and the in the color, kind of um, creating that marbling. So that's that's why I think that. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it and see. <clears throat> we're that's both like trying, we're both fighting. Oh my God, I think we're both fighting. <laughs> I started coughing and then I, and then I like, ate more of it and coughed more. And then coughed more, yeah, but it's so good, I want more. But that makes sense to look at it and you really can see it pressed. I think the biggest example of that, wouldn't you say, is Cahill Porter? Yeah. To see those curds pressed together. Yeah, and another cheddar. Mm -hmm. So Gina's is talking about a cheese from Ireland called Cahill Porter and it's pressed in porter beer. And as you probably know, porter beer is like a stout. It's really dark in color. Mm -hmm. And so when they press it together, it's just like this, almost like a mosaic, dark brown. Right? mosaic marbling it's really beautiful yeah actually. and so that's how you can tell they um, add those flavorings after the curds have been formed yeah yeah and there's um there's so many different ways to do it and you know that that's that's why they're that's one of the reasons why there's so many different cheeses is because you can you can tweak them in so many different ways during the make process and so there's there's mm -hmm. the you know six or seven basic steps but cheese makers can can play around and they can they can you know put one step in front of another yeah. or or, uh, or just tweak them or do <clears throat> one a little bit longer you know just sure. in, just in terms of one of the steps is cutting the curd. Mm -hmm. And so one way that a cheesemaker can can tweak that step is they can cut the curd into little tiny pieces, oh, rice yeah. size pieces, mm -hmm. or they can leave the curd in big pieces like the size of a balled up fist. And the, the bigger the curd, the more moisture that that's going to be left in the curd. And so those are softer cheeses. The smaller they cut the curd, the harder the cheese. And so, so crazy, for right? example, yeah. the, the, the next cheese we're gonna taste, they would have cut the curd into really, really small pieces mm -hmm. to expel more moisture and to, to just make for a, um, a harder finished cheese. Yeah, it's so crazy. Science and creativity combined. Yeah. Yeah, for the cheese making. And, it's and just also, like wine though, age and oak, age and steel. And also a lot of it is, is trial and error. Mm -hmm. um, you know, another another way that they can, you know, create different textures is by aging cheeses. And, you know, aging is the last step in the process. And there's so much that can be um, accomplished and in, 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 in changed during that during that part of the process. Yeah. I mean, we've the all the cheeses that we've talked about, the the robiola, that rind forms during the aging mm -hmm. process for the mountaineer. During the aging process, that's when they, they'll wash it. So that's when it becomes pungent, stinky, that's when the color will change. Uh, for the cheddar, if the longer they age a the cheddar, the sharper it will get. Um, and um, so when we when I talk about those curds, that's, that um, the curds, 
are they get salted and then and then they will hand them out and that's when you can snack on them they taste really good but those are a young cheese that really was not aged right and won't last and yeah so yeah they're, they're meant to be eaten within a couple of days but if they were to finish that the process they would have taken those curds pressed them all together which is what they did with this mm -hmm. but and, I, and as i said they i'm pretty sure that they pressed them with the peppers and yeah. everything else in that mixture um, and then it turns into a block these big slabs and of course they they um they cut them into whatever shape they're gonna age them in and uh and this one because it's the texture is kind of softer and i can tell the cheese itself is a, is a milder younger cheese it's probably only a couple of months, I would say. Yeah, with that texture, you can tell. Yeah. Right. But, but it's the so good. Cheddars will age for, for years, and they'll just get sharper and sharper and sharper yes. as they age. Up to, we've had a 20-year aged cheddar. 20 years. 20 years from, uh, from Wisconsin. Sitting there. That's the beauty of cheese. It just doesn't get old. <laughs> Better with age. Better with age. Like me. <laughs> <laughs> like, like us. Like, like a fine us. wine. <clears throat> exactly. Always better with age. Um, <clears throat> Carol asked about... Uh, aging with peppercorns in it, and yes, yeah, in fact, oh, yeah. the Italians do pepato, mm -hmm. um, and then the California oh. cheesemaker has made a version of that as well, yeah. um, but with whole peppercorns in it. So all kinds of flavors have been used in cheeses, but peppercorns are super, especially for, like cooking. Look mm. for a cheese. There's a there's a famous pecorino from from Italy called pepato, mm -hmm. and that means it's sheep's milk. Um, that's the, the pecorino. They make them in in Lazio, which is where. Rome is. They also make them in Sardinia, mm -hmm. and um, it's kind of like a pecorino romano, but yes. with the peppercorn. Mm. And um, it's they're famous. Also, like they're great for that dish, the cacio e cacio pepe. Cacio e pepe. Oh, I love that dish. Right. I was, mm. um, you know, I have um, my dog's name is Pepper. That's right. Pepper. And you know the word pepato, the cheese name, yeah. it just simply means with pepper. With pepper. So sometimes. So, you say pepato? so sometimes I go. I'm gonna be chilling on the wife on the. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, on wow. the couch. <laughs> no, I'm telling my wife. I'm going to be chilling Sound on the right. couch with pepper. I say, I'm chilling on the couch, pepato. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long, a long journey to get that punchline out. It really but I was, was determined. So you have a pepato <laughs> and I have a panini. <laughs> There's some theme here with the dog names. <laughs> Yeah, food, gee. Food, exactly, exactly. Oh, I love it. Oh. <laughs> oh, so boy. yes, Ooh, far four alarm. Now we gotta go. To, we gotta sweeten it up, Rob. We gotta get to the dessert phase of the program. Let's right? sweeten the deal, baby. Sweeten the deal with OG. OG Crystal. And remind me, oh, oh my gosh, Crystal. what OG sounds? Yes, for OG Crystal. Oh well, oh, old something. No, I thought. Well, OG. So I, I'm, no, I'm not even kidding. I believe mm -hmm. that it's a reference to original gangster. <laughs> not. And I'm not kidding. You're, and, you are kidding. Because the real name of this cheese is not OG Crystal or mm -hmm. Crystal. Crystal. <laughs> the name OG Crystal was given to this cheese by the importer who are called Columbia. They're out of New York, but they have got people everywhere. So you think that's where they put I'm this? I'm almost positive that mm -hmm. um, one of our reps told us or told me that um, that they, they it was just a catchy fun name oh. and they wanted um, so it's it's an OG it's like I but I and I could be wrong and he, or he could have been pulling my yanking my chain a little bit <laughs> probably <Yeah. laughs> but the crystals oh. OG crystal refers to the fact that there are tyrosine or amino acid protein crystals that develop in the cheese again during the aging process so that's what happens to these types of cheeses. This, when I say these types of cheeses, this is a Gouda style cheese. Mm. And this is from West Flanders uh, in what's now Belgium. Mm -hmm. And um, this is made with cow's milk. This is, this is actually um, made with vegetarian rennet and it's pasteurized milk, but it is cow's milk and it's mm -hmm. aged for about 18 months. And, um, and it's a Gouda style. Gouda, this is, um, this is one of our favorite Goudas. Wow. They, they kind of went for a little bit of a different flavor profile from the, the more traditional aged Goudas that get into this age range. They went more for like a cocoa, um, not so much the caramelly, but like the more like rounded cocoa, like a little bit, um, or like a more depth with the, the flavor. Yeah, and I agree. You can't have any of that because it's terrible <laughs> and I should just eat it because I don't want you to be sick. <laughs> It's so good. Oh, but you're right, so some of the aged, aged goudas or howdas, if you really want to be 
um, impressive in your cheese knowledge, call it a chowda. Mm. Um, they're really butterscotchy, toffee, uh, no, butterscotchy, but almost to the point of bitterness or too much sweetness. This mm. is so good. And those tyrosine crystals he's mm -hmm. talking about with the name Cristal, mm -hmm. you can get that little pop of crunch into it. Yeah. But it's still a soft cheese. It's not too hard and crumbly. It has a creaminess um, to it. It does, it does. It, it, it truly is one of our absolute favorites. Mm -hmm. um, and it's definitely a Gouda. You can tell right away. You taste this, you go, Gouda. I mean, you 100% because it's sweet. Good with the wine too, Rob. Mm -hmm. We've got a home run on all of the cheeses today. Oh, yeah. There wasn't one that I went, ew. <laughs> Today they all were really, really good, um, but this one, it's sweet. This is dessert. Gouda's, I think, should be considered dessert. Yeah, and they yeah. oftentimes we serve them at the end of the tastings because we, we have so many aged Gouda's and they, they do really, oh. they get so much more interesting with age, in my mm -hmm. opinion. And most of the Gouda's that we carry are older. They're, yeah. they're over usually six months and up. Yeah, some of the young ones, I can't think of the young ones that I totally love. Vlaskas. Vlaskas, but even so. Vlaskas is over six months. It's probably more like nine months or something. Yeah. It, it's mm -hmm. really smooth, but it still has the, the crystals. The word tyrosine comes from the Greek tyros, mm -hmm. which means cheese. Oh, and I didn't so know it that. actually is. In Greek. Yeah. Ah. So our friend Carol loves it with the jam, so I'm going to save a oh, little. I don't bet. remember, you have to save some jam for the chocolate. Oh. But I'm going to try it with the Gouda. Um, the jam with any of the cheeses, Carol, and everyone, <clears throat> so good. Because it's the salt with the sweet. Yeah. Oh, but so good. <clears throat> and cherry jam, underrated. Mm. Why don't we have more cherry jam out there? Mm. Well, it's one of my favorites. Cherry and raspberry. Mm. Raspberry. Mm -hmm. Raspberry. Raspberry. No, raspberry. I told you the raspberry story. Yeah, I told you that last time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the um, they say with um, when, when the Barberas went through the My Fair Lady treatment and they became more complex, they started they started getting more barrel aids. They started <laughs> getting planted in in, 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 in better areas. Um, they started taking on more of like the, the, the black fruit notes. Yeah. So like black cherry, mm, black raspberry. Deep. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Which is which is set of a lot of like the you know, like the um, the other wine from the um, Barolo. Barolo, yeah. It takes on a lot of that kind of stuff. Yes. Barolos get really deep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This lighter. But also great with the wine. God, I want to go back through all of them now and to try to pick a favorite because I don't think I can. <laughs> because I love them all. Well, you know, the other the other thing is um, Barbera was... Mm -hmm. There's a lot of Italian immigrants that, that planted a lot of Barbera on the West Coast. Like, there's oh, a lot yeah. of them planted in California. And didn't I hear back in, like, the 1800s they started yeah. planting this? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And, and that, it, it, co it coincided with the wave of Italian... Like, the, the 19th, 19th and 20th century, we saw tons of Italians and Irish mm -hmm. come in. Yeah. And, um, and the Italians were planting tons of Barbera. So there's a lot of it. California. Mm -hmm. There's actually... There's also a lot in South America. In um, in Argentina. Oh wow! Okay. So a lot of the, the South American wines yeah. are Barbera, are Barbera based. Mm -hmm. Well, I like Barbera. I'm going to give it a thumbs up to Barbera, for sure. Um, I had a thought. What's your thought? It has left because <laughs> I've had teeny glasses of Barbera. <laughs> blame it on the Barbera. I'm gonna blame it on the Barbera. Um, can we go to chocolate now? Do you want your name to be Barbera Streisand? Bar That's going to be, no, Barbera, because it has to have a cheese in it. Oh. Work on that, Rob. <laughs> if anybody doesn't know, Rob comes up with any cheese name. You, if you want a cheese name, email Rob at Venezimo. He'll I come up with you. a name for you. <laughs> Tell him your favorite cheese, he will come up with a name for you. <laughs> That's my challenge. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, and, and he's up to it. I, I, I can attest. <laughs> I can attest. <laughs> Yeah. So we do, uh, is it Let's truffle time? Truffle. Let's go to truffle time. So we have our truffle hunter. Well, I forgot to mention the chocolate covered pretzels. They're good too. Which are, but I'll hold off. I'm going to hold wanna... that because let's go to the blue cheese chocolate truffle. All right. Before, and everybody got these. I hope, everybody right? got these. Two yeah. of them? Did everyone get two yeah. of them? Yeah, for sure. The, um, the cheese yeah. in this yes. is a double cream mm -hmm. blue from mm -hmm. southern France called saint mm -hmm. which is one of my faves. And then, did you want to tell us more about the mm. the process? What, what did you oh What did you do here? And okay. is this meant to be on there, or is that like a Stop. part? Is what that is part that? of the cracker? Okay. Must have. Is that rice? I don't know what you got on there. <laughs> okay, so it's just a chocolate mm. truffle to begin with, oh, yeah. which is dark chocolate and heavy cream, which makes a ganache, which you form into the little chocolate ball. But with this, we've added blue cheese. You can taste the blue cheese. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. At first, and I can smell it too. If you pick it up and smell it. You probably will smell something that's funky, and that is 
the blue cheese in there. Um, and then it's made into the ganache and made into the ball and then rolled in cocoa powder. It's really blue cheesy. Oh, I, I, I thought it wouldn't be so much when it's I. It's very blue cheesy, but mm -hmm. that, to is me, good? that's a good thing. Yeah, and with the chocolate, it's okay. Oh, yeah. I was inspired I so. by Rogue River Creamery, who mm -hmm. sells their little blue cheese truffles um, in their shop. And I was like, well, let's try to make these. Mm -hmm. I think it would be fun with the Truffle Hunter blue cheese truffles. Mm -hmm. And it's very dark and rich chocolate. Are you a chocolate guy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. of Always. Mm -hmm. Always. And it's Valentine's Day coming Just up. Just asking. Ooh. <laughs> So this makes, this to me, like dried out the wine. It didn't get sweet at all because maybe that's sweet, uh -huh. but it dried out the wine. It's interesting how it, the yeah. wine tends to, to um, kind of balance whatever you're tasting with it. So like the spicy cheese kind of like sweetened it, it, it sort of calmed it down. Mm -hmm. This is doing the opposite. Opposite. This is crazy. I got to say, I'm not crazy about it with the wine. Mm -hmm. I'm crazy about it on its own. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I think it's too, it's just too much and too rich you think for, so? the, for the wine. I do. Okay, but did you try it? Yeah, oh. this was the one that I've been waiting for all day because I love raw chocolate covered cherries. I just, I just like swallowed my whole, I just oh. pounded it. Here, but just here, eat the other half of the, the other <laughs> upside down half of this. Just take a bite of that. Here, go like this. Oh, that's so pretty. I never said we we're super classy. Um, but who doesn't like chocolate covered cherries mm. and cherries again with any of the cheese and what about with the cherries with the blue good that's okay. awesome yeah so you know next time i'm gonna oh i I'm should wrap even, it around a cherry i should have put more i was gonna say i would even put more <laughs> <laughs> okay everybody we've decided now <laughs> i should have put the cherry inside the truffle with oh yeah that's it chocolate covered cherry you guys chocolate covered blue cheese no Cherry covered blue cheese truffle. I'm going in. Going. I'll, I'll keep talking. <laughs> Cherry covered blue cheese truffle. You ate the whole thing. You ate two of them. I have more in the fridge. <laughs> I'll send you home with them. <laughs> Everybody's liking it. It's so good. It's so different. Mm. I hope you like it. I love that. And I love the cherry. That is good. <clears throat> and with the wine. Oh, let me try again. I'm going to do the chocolate covered pretzel since somebody ate the chocolate covered pretzel. <laughs> I thought I was supposed to. That was supposed to be enough. <laughs> I should give a plate. Oh, well. It's a classy bunch around here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But let me just do this chocolate covered pretzel because the, the beauty of the chocolate covered pretzel, the chocolate with the salty pretzel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what it, that's what it comes down to. And, it's... and with the wine, good. I mean, it's good. I'm still going to pick the cheeses with the wine better than the chocolates with mm -hmm. the wine, but um that's just me the cheese has the mm -hmm. advantage of, of having the the fat the fat is just always such a great balance just as like the base of everything the the salt and the fat balancing yeah. with the acidity yeah. and that's why that's why you want acidity in fruit um to and that's why wine of course is such a perfect balance Be it, yes the balance with it mm -hmm. sure 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 yeah awesome rob well what do we think i'm loving barbara mm. Can I tell you, this uh, journey that we've been on to learn all the varietals has been fun. It has been fun. I've learned so much about oh, wine. Oh, about wine, right? And all the cheeses that go with it. Mm -hmm. It's getting difficult, everybody, to come up with all the cheeses now that are different. Because we yeah. don't want to repeat cheeses. We want to find good ones that go with all of these new varietals. Um, but this is Wine on Wednesday, we decided number 18. Virtual number 51. So if you multiply that by four, that's a lot of cheeses that have been... Um, that's a couple through. hundred. That's a couple hundred. <laughs> my math. No, well, no one said I was good at that. We've, done a, and we've done a few that have had six cheeses, remember? Yeah. At the beginning. So It's more better always in cheese it is. And the thing is, I mean, the, the, <clears throat> if we do four cheeses with, with one wine... Try those four cheeses with a different wine, and you've got four different pairings. You'd have four different, and four different experiences, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm really going back now to these, for some reason, with that um, Il Vero sheep we did. I think that uh -huh. would be delicious. Oh, yeah. Well, it's these, good. these with uh, the, the Barolo, we did a Barolo a few weeks ago, too, I think, didn't we? Uh, we did with the Bar was it Barolo? Nebbiolo. Ne well, yeah, Nebbiolo. Nebbiolo. But maybe it wasn't from Barolo, but it was the same. Yes, yes. Same but still so, so good. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the other thing, too, is there's 
there's new cheeses that come out every week. You know, we're always rotating, oh, so we yeah. can always find new we're ones. We're going to find new ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's new ones popping in. In fact, Robbie G, next Wine of Wednesday, are you ready for this one? I want to hear you say it. <laughs> <laughs> Gov- okay. Gewürztraminer. Well done. You are gr- rough, rough, rough. You're German, <laughs> Germanic, right? Yes. Gewürztraminer. Gewürztraminer. I've heard, I've heard it said before. And I was yes. Just, I, what's the one what? I couldn't get? It was... Uh, oh my gosh, what was it? Now I'm drawing the blank. It was an Austrian one. Uh, <laughs> the Grüner. Grüner. Vetliner. Vetliner. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I saying it like a Swedish with a Swedish I'm a Swedish <laughs> Grüner Vetliner. <laughs> so, next two weeks from now, uh, whatever that date is, is... Gewürztraminer. Gewürz. And Gewürztraminer, okay, Gewürztraminer can be very, Barbero, we talked about Barbero de Asti, and everybody knows Asti Spumante, super sweet, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Gewürztraminer, like Riesling, I think has a kind of slightly negative connotation. Because yeah. Because people are like, oh, it's too sweet. People I don't think want sweet wine. I don't think so. Yeah. No, some of the best yeah. wines in the world, like some of those regions in Germany are really so good. considered, I mean, the, the best of the best, the Exactly. Top. So the Gewürz is going to be very interesting. It's from a place called Blue Quail. Delicious, mm. organic, all the good stuff, and um, it's a delicious wine. So What's, where's Blue Quail? Do we, I knew you'd ask me that. <laughs> it's Why a, does it sound like Australian or something? It does, but it's Mendocino County. So okay, so North it's Cal, California. Mm-hmm. It's Cal. Okay. It's a California Gewürz. Um, but it captures, it's got the grape, it captures the flavors of the traditional, but there's myths about Gewürztraminer that we will bust. All I've right. already learned too, but I'm not telling you until... Don't, until don't, don't tell me. <laughs> Surprise me. Yeah, so very good. So everybody, thank you. It sounds like everybody loved all the pairings, as I did. And uh, as always, cheers to cheese. Cheers, everybody. Auf Wiedersehen. No, we're in, we're in Italy. What do we say? Ciao. Arrivederci. <laughs> Arrivederci. Arrivederci. Until next time. Buonasera. Bye. Signor. You're the best. <laughs> <laughs> See you next time.